welcome let's see the solutions to the questions that dropped for the wasi 2023 further mathematics mathematics elective paper 2. in this video we will look at questions 1 through 8 the compulsory questions so we begin with the first one on trigonometry if 2 sine theta is equal to 3 over tan theta find the values of theta for 0 degrees less than theta less than 360 degrees so how do we go about this so this is the given equation we can rewrite tan theta as sine theta over cos theta as you can see here now to simplify this we multiply by the reciprocal of sine theta over cos theta which is the same as 3 times cos theta over sine theta and that will give us what you are seeing here sine theta equal to 3 cos theta sine theta over sine theta now what do we do next we have to multiply cross multiply to get 2 sine square theta is equal to 3 cos theta so this multiplies this now we have to use um, the property of quadratic equations so you rewrite this in this form now what we are going to do is to use the identity the trigonometric identity recall that sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 so making sine square theta the subject we have 1 minus cos square theta that we fix there for sine square theta minus 3 cos theta equals 0 now we can expand 2 times 1 is 2 uh, minus 2 cos square theta minus 3 cos theta equals 0 so we have a quadratic equation that we have rearranged nicely to obtain this we have a quadratic equation in cos theta so what do we do next we split the middle term so we factor there's a common factor of 2 cos theta a common factor of negative 1 yeah now we use the zero product property to get either 2 cos theta minus 1 equals 0 or cos theta plus 2 equals 0 with this one you know cos theta cannot be more than 1 it's less than or equal to one or negative one so it is undefined for cos theta equal negative two so we pick cos theta equal one over two and continue working with that one so we are going to get cos inverse of one over two or so in this case theta is in the first quadrant or theta can also be in the fourth quadrant because that is where cos is positive is positive so we will get theta equals 60 degrees or 360 degrees minus 60 degrees which is 60 degrees or 300 degrees now let's look at the second question we have to express 3x minus 1 over 3x squared plus 4x plus 1 in partial fractions partial fractions so we can factor this we factor that what do we get we get x plus 1 3x plus 1 so we set up the, the equation the identical the identity is giving us this p over the first factor and q over the second factor which is this so what do we do next we find the lcm here which is x plus 1 3x plus 1 so this goes into this 3x plus 1 times so 3x plus 1 times p will give us what we are, looking, we are seeing here then also 3x plus 1 will come here x plus 1 times so times q we get q times x plus 1 so we can equate the numerators to obtain 3x minus 1 is equal to p into bracket 3x plus 1 plus q into bracket 3x 
x plus 1. So we set up x equal negative 1 because when this equals 0, we are going to get x equal negative 1. So that will give us something like this negative 1 whenever we see x, negative 4 whenever we see x. So we will get negative 4p equal negative 2p, and that will give us p equal 2, positive 2. So when we put x equal negative 1 over 3, that is, we set this equal 0, the cover up rule, we are going to obtain this, and this will eventually give us q to be equal to negative 2 times 3 over 2, which is equal to negative 3. So what do we do next? We are going to substitute the values to get 3x minus 1 over x plus 1 into 3x plus 1 is equal to 2 over x plus 1 minus 3 over 3x plus 1. Or better still, this thing here is equal to what you are seeing here. Alright. Question number 3. Before we begin, please kindly subscribe to this channel if you have not yet done so. Thank you so much for all your support. Given that alpha and beta are the roots of 4x squared minus 4x minus 2 equals 0, find the equation whose roots are 2 minus alpha and 2 minus beta. So, we know from the given equation, the value of a is 4, b is negative 5, and c is negative 2. Now, the sum of the roots will be this, what you see on your screen. 2 minus alpha, 2 minus beta. When we sum them, we are going to get something like this, 4 minus alpha plus beta. So we know alpha plus beta is negative b over a. So we substitute the value of b and a. And that will give us 11 over 4 when we simplify it. Now let's consider the product of roots. So with the product of roots, what we are going to do is we multiply the roots given to us. And this will give us 4 minus 2 into bracket alpha plus beta plus alpha beta. So we fix in the values. Alpha plus beta is minus b over a and alpha beta is c over a. Now when we fix in the values of a, b, and c, we get what you are seeing here. We simplify to obtain 4 over 4, which is 1. So the sum of roots is known. The product of roots, that is new root, is known. So the equation, the new equation is given by x squared. When the sum of roots times x plus product of roots is equal to 0. So when we fix in this, this is what we are getting. Therefore, the equation is 4x squared minus, minus 11x plus 4 is equal to 0. Question number 4. Using the trapezium rule with 7 ordinates, evaluate from 0 to 3 the integral of 1 over x squared plus 5 dx, correct to 2 decimal places. So let's begin. So we can quickly form a table and compute the y values, the y values by plugging in x into this function here. y is equal to 1 over square root of x squared plus 5. So how do we got the 7 ordinates? We use the boundaries. So
so we begin from zero we have to end at three now to get the intermediate values what do we do we find the h which is given by three minus zero over n which is seven minus one so that will give us three over six which is half so you keep adding half until you get to the last limit which is the upper limit which is three then we you fix in these values into this expression here so when x equals zero you put zero here we get one over root five when x equals 0 0.5 you put 0 0.5 here and square it that will give you give you all these values that you are seeing here so we work we are working to four decimal places so that we will not um, exaggerate the values so we fix in into the formula which is the trapezium rule 1 over 2 times h the h that we found here then first y value plus the last y value then 2 times all the remaining y values and add them so when we do that this is what we are getting and when we simplify we are going to obtain 1.102325 to two decimal places we get 1.10 let's move on to question number five now before that please if you have not yet subscribed to this channel kindly hit the subscribe button if you have already downloaded the video before you are hearing this please just come online come online come online and come in just subscribe all right thank you for doing that now let's look at question number five a bag contains six m and m squared number of identical white yellow and blue balls respectively if the probability of drawing a yellow ball is 2 over 13 find the value of m we're given this information the total number of balls will be 6 plus m plus m squared then we also have the number of yellow balls is m because it says respectively so what do we do we have to fix in the values we're told that probability of y equal to over 3 we know probability of y is number of y over the number of sample space so that will give us m over m squared plus m plus 6 is equal to 2 over 13 then what do we do next we can cross multiply expand then we obtain our quadratic equation then what do we do we set up the we split the middle term so this is supposed to be 2m squared minus 8m forget about this here yeah. 2m squared minus 8m minus 3m because minus 8m minus 3m will give us minus 11m and minus 8 times minus 3 will give us 24 because 2 times 12 is 24 so what do we do we obtain 2m into bracket m minus 4 minus 3 into bracket m minus 4 equals 0 so using the zero product principle we get 2m minus 3 equals 0 or m minus 4 equals 0 that will give us m equal 3 over 2 or m equal 4 but we know that number of balls must be whole numbers so therefore the number of yellow balls is 4 number of yellow balls is 4 that is the number of m the value of m is 4 the table shows the table shows the marks obtained by a student in mathematics and physics tests 
mathematics we can see and the physics we can see in the table calculate the spearman's rank correlation coefficient so we can do that by using the formula 1 minus 6 times summation of the deviation squared deviation of the rank squared over n minus n squared minus 1 over n into bracket n squared minus 1 so we can we have to come we have to form a table and compute the ranks so we rank from highest to lowest as you can see so this is the rank for mathematics and then this is the rank for physics uh, sorry this is supposed to be physics physics good then what do we do next we find a deviation 7 minus 6 7 minus 1 6 then 6 squared 36 3 minus 7 negative 4 negative 4 squared 16 we do it to the last one 2 minus 4 negative 2 minus 6 negative 4 negative 4 squared 16 8 minus 4 4 and 4 squared 16 then we add all to get summation of d squared then we fix it in here we fix the n which is 8 in here and that will give us um 6 times 144 over 8 into bracket 8 squared minus 1 that will give us 1 minus 864 over 8 and 63 and we are going to get negative 0 0.7143 that is the experiment's rank cor correlation coefficient question number seven the vectors p is equal to alpha plus 1i plus 3j and q equal i plus 5j are perpendicular to vectors r equal 4i plus beta j and s vector x equal 2 beta plus 6i plus alpha minus 3j respectively find the values of the constants alpha and beta so we're given that the vector p is perpendicular to the vector r so when we dot them using a dot product you're supposed to get a scalar which is zero so we fix in the vectors vector p is this vector r is this so the dot products we are going to multiply this by this and this by this so that is what we are getting then the next thing we are going to do is to expand and set up the first equation which is our first equation in the standard form linear equation now we use the second condition Q is perpendicular to S. So P dot Q dot S should also give us zero. Vector Q dot vector X should give us zero. So we fix in the vectors there. So this will multiply one. Then we add it to this will multiply five. So we expand and rewrite the equation to obtain a second standard equation, second standard linear equation. So we have two equations in alpha and beta that we need to solve for alpha and beta. Now what you're going to do is this. Uh, we can use any other method you want, but I'm going to subtract equation one from equation two. So that will get something like this. Alpha minus beta is equal to 13. So alpha will be equal to 13 plus beta. You can do any other way to get the same answer. But I want to uh, simplify the number of things I'm carrying. So alpha will be equal to 13, 13 plus beta. So I can fix it into equation 1 or any of the equations preferable equation one so forever i see alpha in equation one i put 13 plus beta now we expand 
2052 plus 4 beta plus 3 beta equal negative 4. So 7 beta equal negative 56, beta will be equal to negative 8, alpha will be equal to 30 minus 8, which is 5. Thank you for joining us. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. And also do me a favor by sharing this video with just one more person. Thank you. Thank you very much. At least one more person. All right. Let's look at question number eight, which is the final question in this video. A truck retards uniformly from a velocity of 50 meters per second and come to rest in six seconds. Find the retardation of the truck. So we're given that the truck retards uniformly. So from a velocity of this, so that is the U and comes to rest so final velocity v in c seconds t and we don't know the a acceleration so we can use the equation v equal u plus a t so we're fixing the v the u and the t and we solve for a to get 2.5 meters per second squared so the retardation is 2.5 meters per second squared a B plus A, we should calculate the distance covered by the track during this period. So distance covered is given by this formula, S equal UT plus half AT squared, where we have the A to be this, A is a retardation, so negative to point five meters per second squared. So we fix in the values to get what you are seeing here and ninety minus two point five times eighteen which is ninety minus forty five which is forty five meters. So the distance covered by the track is forty five meters. Thank you, thank you. Please remember to subscribe to this channel. See you in the continuation of this paper, which is coming very soon.